that is the ongoing dialogue forever as a parent mm. is is your your so so you can quote Rumi and you know the um the one about the bow and that you know you I'm sure you know the quote uh, yeah yeah <laughs> um is that that at best we're the bow and we're not the arrow we're not we're we're, we're creating a, a, a launching point for them mm. and, but they have to have a journey of their own their life takes its own journey um, yeah and, and you it's you, a Khalil Gibran I think and he he oh, says yeah, yeah. Um, as they love the creator as he loves the arrow he also loves the bow that's steady um yeah. and they come through us they're not of us and that, that was such a powerful yeah sorry i love that i love that quote yeah. thank you for bringing yeah, it up exactly yeah. exactly yeah and so and so the challenge is 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 knowing is figuring out and being in the dance mm -hmm. of of how much do i structure their life and their what they're doing and enable them to make decisions and how much do i peel back structure and say make what are the decisions you can make now you, mm. you, when they're two they're not making a lot of decisions <laughs> uh, mm. but as they get older you're going to have to have be in a constant dialogue about what decisions matter to you because mm. sometimes the decisions that they want to make you know like like you might give them a choice between two things that they don't care about mm. And it's nice that you gave them the choice, but if it's the one they don't care about, that's not the one that mattered. The one that matters mm -hmm. is the one they care about. And sometimes, as a parent, you have to make choices and decisions that they don't want you to make. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But you have to. Uh, you know, we don't come into the world wired for understanding traffic, for instance. Yeah. Um, especially when they're two. He's probably got his legs under him, right? Is he, is yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, okay. does he. So he will go. <laughs> And so yeah. you have to say, okay, I understand traffic. He does not. He was not brought mm. into this world with it. Mm. And so you have to make him hold your hand you ha or carry him. Or, you know, you have to make decisions that he may not want you to make. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, because you have the bigger sight, you have a bigger vision of how the world works. And he wasn't brought in with that knowledge. And you need to impart that knowledge. And the way you do that is you... First of all, get him to survive to an older age. <laughs> mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you protect him from the cars in the traffic. But then mm -hmm. as they start to, because he's also got those internal drive, this dr God-given, like, I will figure out how to be independent of you. <laughs> mm. I will figure out how to be competent in the situation. I will figure mm -hmm. out how to express myself here. And that's where you and you figure out ways as a parent how to, structure okay how does that work and and how do i help him learn that that is, you have to look first thing is going to be look both ways he's probably not up to look both ways yet <laughs> mm -hmm. uh that's going to be a few years down the road uh, mm -hmm. but eventually you'll be like okay he knows to look and eventually mm -hmm. and, and he does that because he respects you know he, he he's he's in relationship with somebody who's bringing that to him and he eventually mm -hmm. learns that now when you get to be a teenager if someone were trying to hold your hand across the street that would be taken as an insult <laughs> because you see yourself as a competent person. You are a yeah. member of this society. So trying to hold your hand. Now, now the teenager would love to hold the two-year-old's hand to get across mm. that street because that yep. signals their competence. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. So so that's where it gets tricky is, is they don't come into the world with traffic as a thing, but eventually mm. they get it and they incorporate it into who they are. Now, I don't go up to a street and go, woohoo, I get across the street and I'm going to do all... <laughs> Like, intrinsic motivation to cross a street safely is not a mm -hmm. thing. It's a mechanism I use because I've learned it and I've incorporated it into who I am, mm -hmm. but it's not intrinsically motivating to do it in a safe manner. Yeah. So, so, so this is one of the conversations in education is that there's a lot of people who have really interesting notions about how important intrinsic motivation. So if you look at the radical alternative schools, Mm -hmm. Where they give kids, you know, like they, they get to make all the choices. They don't have yeah. required academics. They have mm -hmm. other ways that they do things. And some of them will talk about what they do as if everything's intrinsically motivated. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. That's not true mm -hmm. of anyone. And so you can't overemphasize the intrinsic. Like I, I could talk about enthusiasm and joy and, you know, and learning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's important. It's an ingredient, but it's not <laughs> it's the whole dish. But... It's also having someone realize like, oh, there's a reality out there beyond mm -hmm. me 
and it will kick my behind <laughs> if I'm yeah. not dealing with it appropriately. So mm -hmm. extrinsic motivation of that kind is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're holding your child's hand when they're not capable of safely crossing a street is an okay kind of extrinsic motivation and engagement. Aside from us